Hey guys, this is John Ampersina, aka Uncle Dunkel, over from lineups.com, and I'm here today to give you some, some steps for how to win on DraftKings. So, me being from New Jersey, I've been one of the many fortunate people to be able to legally bet on sports. Uh, I have a, a very long track record of, of handicapping for for many years, and, uh, and I make two or three Vegas trips a year where I I do quite a lot of sports betting, so now it's nice that I can do it in New Jersey. When I go to Atlantic City here, I can make sports bets, but nothing easier than doing it on DraftKings. And, you know, their their format for making bets has, has made things very simple. They're offering a ton of player props. There's just a lot of things, different things to bet, and I'm here today to give you, give you some steps on how to uh, be ahead of the curb and be better than, you know, your average Joe at uh, betting on sports. So for one thing, We'll get right started. Uh, utilize the promotions, right? So they're going to give you various promotions daily. Uh, if I can go into it a little bit here, uh, we'll take, uh, for instance, I'll go ahead and click on promos. Um, you'll see that they'll offer you in, in any given time or, or format, they'll offer you parlay insurance, odds boosts. Um, the sports book pools is pretty cool as well. They'll, offer, they'll also offer you various perks. Uh, daily in, in many different regards. Now, what I will mention is when you first buy in for the first time on DraftKings, you have the opportunity to be matched with up to $200. It's a free bet. You know, you come in, uh, you deposit $200, they'll match you at $200, and, uh, you know, it's, it's right in your account. Uh, now, there is a little bit of rollover on it, so you have to probably play through it about twice. But, uh, you know, ultimately, it's, 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 it's a pretty nice perk. Uh, you know, again, it's, it's free from them. Uh, and uh, I definitely utilized it when I first joined. Uh, you'd almost be foolish not to. So they'll, they'll match up to 200 in my opinion. Buy in for 200 get that free $200 bet. Um, and then, you know, use it slowly. No matter what type of player you are, whether you're a $10 player, $100 player, $200 player, even more, it's still free money. Uh, and you can you can play through it as you'd like. As far as cashing out, though, you'll have to roll through that money twice, at least twice, to get that money back. Uh, so like I said, number one step to winning on DraftKings, make sure you're utilizing the promotions. There's odds boosts that go in your favor. Um, it's a numbers game, folks. So when the number makes sense for you, make sure uh, you're, you're throwing at least a little money, at least a little bit of money at it. Uh, number two, uh, find situational bets. So for me, uh, it's all about favorable odds. Uh, like I, I can't stress this enough, numbers game. Uh, do your research uh, and find specific holes and spots that you might like that are favorable. Um, so for me specifically, uh, I love to find uh, it, it, we'll, we'll take the NFL for instance. I love to. I love teams coming off a few road games and coming back home, especially if they've lost those road games. So if, if a team went on the road for a few games, lost, uh, and then comes back home, um, uh, typically the the lines makers, since it's 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 a public betting format, they have to even the odds um, uh, towards the or even the odds towards the the uh, against the home team in this in this scenario. You have you have a few different road games. Uh, from from one team that's been playing very poorly, coming back home, typically the the, the spread's going to be against them uh, a few different points. Whereas if you rewound three weeks and maybe that team didn't have those three road games, maybe the line would be a few extra points in their favor. So I always feel like in those situations, you're getting a few extra points based on public perception. Make sure you use it to your advantage. Uh, sticking with football, typically there's an overcompensation for um, sports lines and sports betters, particularly on non-quarterback play. So... Um, if a quarterback's out, don't get me wrong. Quarterbacks can impact the game. Last year, Aaron Rodgers was able to uh, impact the game almost 10 points. Uh, I'm sure Brady would have a similar impact on the line. Uh, Russell Wilson will have a similar impact on the line. Um, but I'm talking non-QB injuries, like a, like a wide receiver, like a running back, like a Zeke Elliott. Like If Zeke Elliott got hurt, I feel like people would be like, oh, my God, you know who's going to fill in for Dallas? Running back is a very interchangeable position in the NFL. Uh, don't hold too much weight to a position player. Uh, I'll give you a good example, James Conner. Uh, filling in rather nicely for Le'Veon Bell this year. Uh, positions like that and wide receiver as well. Uh, keep in mind that the, the, these teams practice uh, all week uh, with their first with their first strings. If somebody's out and they've been sitting all week, uh, the, the, first, the the people getting reps are, are, are prepared for Sunday. Uh, again, the only, the only situation that I, I, I won't overcompensate for is QB, but outside of that, don't ever don't ever look at a line and be like, oh my God, how could, that, how could the Cowboys possibly win without Ezekiel Elliott? Uh, always keep in mind it's a numbers game. The numbers will impact him not playing. Don't overcompensate there. Uh, another situation I like to look for is rookie quarterback starting on the road. Uh, if I don't have to lay more than a touchdown and a rookie quarterback is starting on the road, I will almost always, uh, will, lack of a better word, blindly bet it. 
Um, rookie quarter, look, at the end of the day, it's tough to win on the NFL, and it's tough to win in the NFL on the road. Rookie quarterback getting two experiences for the first time. If I have to, if there's any situation where I don't have to lay um, more than seven points, I'm auto playing uh, the home team in that scenario. Uh, again, up to seven. Uh, just my research has shown me that that's, that's always been a, a, a number that, that's won um, up to 70% of the time uh, over the past few years. Uh, NFL specifically, always be wary of laying any points above 13 and a half. I understand that over the last, you know, four or five years, that it's about 50-50 splits on these lines. Um, uh, do keep in mind that before this, though, before about five years, uh, five years before these most recent trends, uh, this has been winning at over 65% uh, with the underdog or in favor of the underdog. So always, always make sure you are weary of big lines and big spreads because you, you just, it's, in the NFL, no, really, no team is is 14 points better than than any other team um, more than 50 percent of the time. I mean, it's just, it's just not the case. Um, a lot of even the worst teams are still playable against even the best teams. So always keep that in mind. Um, I, I never will lay more than 13 and a half. In more cases than not, I'm actually playing the dog in all those scenarios. Uh, those are some those are some situations that can keep you ahead in the NFL. Um, Step number three to winning on DraftKings would definitely be, as I've mentioned already a few times, it's a numbers game, okay? Make sure that you're always looking at the number as your biggest factor, okay? You, I can't stand what people say, oh my God, uh, Team X is playing Team Y and and there's no way Team X loses. Like, I, I'll, I'll lay any number. I mean, that's just foolish. Like, why, why would you even assume that or say that? Uh, it's always a numbers game. And what I like to do is I like to have uh, my models state Team A, uh, I will bet Team A, at this number, I will bet team B at this number, and the middle we'll call it maybe a five to seven point middle, whatever that is. Uh, I won't. The game is an off game for me. Don't bet it. Uh, so maybe like a line opens and I want to bet team X, great, and the line will move throughout the week, falls into a no bet, but it doesn't matter because I already bet it. Or maybe even in rare scenarios, it'll fall so far in the other direction that I will bet team B, give myself like a seven point middle, where yeah I could, I could be paying juice on both sides, but I have a seven point middle. Game middles, I win both games. Uh, so you always want to be looking at that um, uh, the quote unquote sharp people as it relates to sports betting are always looking at numbers. They're not looking at teams. You won't you won't be hearing uh, somebody say, "Oh, I don't even care what the line is this week. Just just blindly bet the Patriots or just blindly bet um, you know the Rams." Uh, you, you don't hear sharp guys saying stuff like that. And it's definitely something you always want to be wary of when you're hearing people promote themselves in any way, uh, listening to that type of stuff. Um, as I mentioned, always have a number where you'll bet both sides. I, I feel like nobody really does this. Uh, it's such like a, an unheard of thing. Um, and it, it really holds true for, you know, a lot of people. When you hear like, oh, the sharps are on this number or the sharps are on this number, it's really because, you know, these people have, you know, uh, both numbers in mind for where they would bet team A or team B. They're never, they're never completely not going to bet one team. Like, you know, if a team goes on a seven game losing streak, they're never like, oh, I, I'm not betting a bad team. You know, the old, the old saying used to be, you know, never bet on bad teams, but what if you're betting on a bad team with a great number, right? So we always want to keep that in mind. The number is the most important thing. Um, and uh, and always feel free to compare odds across sports books. I mean, this video is really going to uh, show you the ins and outs of winning on DraftKings, but never be afraid to to compare odds uh, between DraftKings and FanDuel, right? Because if you play on both anyway, why would you be betting? If, if if you're looking at a player prop for a, run, for a running back, like for instance, let's say Deion Lewis's running back prop is 42 on FanDuel at minus 110, but it's only... Uh, and, and, and it's 45 and a half on DraftKings, um, you know, minus 105. Which one are you going to bet? Well, the number state, you should be betting the 42 minus 110. Granted, it's only you, you pay a little less juice on DraftKings, but those three yards could burn you. Uh, so you're always going to want to get the better line um, and the better number. So do, never be never be too um, uh, quick to make a bet. Always, always compare odds, um, you know, to, just to make sure you're getting the best number and the best value. Um, Bankroll management would be step number four. Um, it's always worth noting that the best sportsbook handicappers, uh, no matter how good they are, how good they could be, uh, you can win 80% of your games and still be in the hole 100% of your bankroll. If you go 8-2 and two over the course of 10 games and you win, again, 80% of your games, but after you went 6-1 and one over your first seven, you said to yourself, well, it's time for me to start start tripling, tripling down or quadrupling down on my money here, uh, next thing you know, you're going to find yourself in a hole. Meanwhile, you were eight and two and you're losing money. So always keep in mind, stay, stay true to yourself uh, with regards to bankroll management. As, as another key part of bankroll management, avoid parlays at all costs. Uh, 
you know, granted, look, you want to you want to you want to turn the occasional toothpick into a baseball bat. Go ahead. I'm not one to judge. But if you're somebody that's long term, trying to bet, trying to stay alive long term, you know, you, you can't bet parlays. You just can't. You gotta you gotta stick to to bets you like, bets you like, numbers you like, single bets, um, and and keep yourself keep yourself tied to three to five bets a day. If you if you bet more than that, you're gonna find yourself uh, entering tilt uh, far more often than not. You know, it, it, it's a lot easier to swallow a pill if you've lost five units in one day than if you've lost 25 units in one day, right? Um, you know, so you, you no matter how good, you no matter how hot you're doing or how poorly you're doing, always keep yourself capped at three to five bets. Look, at the end of the day, if, if you have a proper bankroll of, say, uh, $1,000 and you're betting $100 a game, and over the course of five games, you go five and out, so now your bankroll is $1,500, uh, maybe increase your bet to, to 125 or 150 Don't don't say, oh, wow, I have all this money now. I can turn 1500 into three grand with a snap of a finger if I bet one game. Well, you can also turn 1500 into zero by losing that game, right? So uh, always keep in mind, this is a marathon. It's not a sprint. Um, you know, I see all the time people betting these, these large parlays um, and maybe even thinking about hedging themselves later in them. It just, it, it's such a mess. Stick to, stick to single bets. Um, never bet more than 10 to 15% of your bankroll in a given day. Uh, these, these, are, these are rules you need to live by. Principles. Uh, if you wanna, if you wanna be able to bet and survive long term uh, on any sports betting platform, you, bankroll management is the most important piece. Don't care how good you are at betting sports, if your bankroll management's all over the place, your money's gonna be all over the place. Uh, last but not least, avoid touts, right? Uh, you know, you you see all these people popping up, the sell in the world. Keep in mind, a guy could be, you know, fifty and ten in his last sixty games, you know, winning eighty percent of his games, and the problem is he hasn't won you anything. Right? So what he's promoting, he's, 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 it's just a marketing tool. It's nothing more than that. Um, always keep in mind that the, the, the touts are, are, are practically selling air. Because if, if the idea is you need to win 52.5% of your games to sustain uh, profitability, you know, if you're paying a tout separate money as well, percentage of your bankroll, percentage of your bets, whatever it is, a monthly fee, keep in mind that that 52.5% now climbs, right? It climbs either 53, 54, however much money you're paying. It makes it harder. Now, I'm all, I understand the idea of someone who doesn't want to put the time, doesn't want to put the research in, and you trust somebody that, that is putting the time and is putting the research in, but always make sure you're looking at what these people are betting, right? Because you don't want, you don't want just uh, call it piker, pikers promoting you know, their picks because ultimately, if you're a guy who's betting $100 a game and you're paying somebody who bets $10 a game, if you're buying picks with somebody who's only betting $10 a game, well, something's wrong there, isn't it? I mean, guy who loves his picks and loves the way he's betting, so I'm betting $10 a game. You know, so always, if you're going to buy from a tout, ask for screenshots, ask for something that he's betting regularly. How much money is he putting in play weekly? How serious is he taking this? Because ultimately, uh, you're going to commit your money in one area. Make sure it's the right one, right? So basically, that's it. Just wanted to go through uh, uh, five key key topics for how to properly uh, or how to have an extra edge winning on DraftKings. I uh, hope you guys found this video uh, informative and helpful. Uh, definitely feel free to check out lineups.com. Uh, that's where I get a lot of my models and research from uh, to help me with sports betting. And, um, and that's basically it. You can give me a follow over at Uncle Dunkle on Twitter. Um, and again, thanks again for listening.